This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Computer-assisted audit techniques are increasingly important ways of collecting evidence uh, that is going to support the conclusions from an audit. More and more uh, organisations are now using computers to maintain their accounting records on. And if you're not using computer-assisted audit techniques, the chances are the audit you're doing is not as good as it could be. People used to talk about auditing round the computer. You saw what was coming in, you saw what was coming out, but you had very little idea of how you got from one to the other, what sort of processing was happening within the computer, indeed even what records were being held there. That is, is not really something which would nowadays be acceptable. There are two main types of uh, computer-assisted audit techniques. And the first is the use of what's called an audit program. And an audit program is something which is owned by the auditor. Firms of auditors develop these programs. And really their purpose is to read the data on clients' computer files. Now, once you can read the data on clients' computer files, then you can do all sorts of interesting manipulation with that data. For example, you can select samples uh, to investigate. Uh, if you remember when we were talking about uh, sampling, uh, ideally you'd like to get random sampling. Uh, if you've got 10,000 or 100,000 records on a computer, then it's pretty easy to... Uh, get your order program to select maybe a hundred of those records at random. Or it would be very easy for you to get it to stratify. So you could tell the audit program, uh, you know, print out every balance which is over 250,000, uh, print out 10% of the balances which are between 50,000 and 250,000, print out 100 balances which are on the uh, the 50,000. And the great thing is, uh, b because the, you know, the computer works pretty quickly, you could read through, or your audit program can read through, thousands of uh, uh, client records very, very quickly. Uh, so many records that you couldn't hope to do it manually. Uh, to, to kind of leaf through this would take forever. So we can select uh, samples to investigate. If I kind of join this uh, just down here a little bit, one of the things you can actually do is to select unusual items for investigation. So if we had inventory which was negative, that shouldn't happen. If we had credit balances on a receivables ledger, again, that shouldn't really happen. If we had inventory which didn't seem to have moved for six months, that's worth investigating uh, because we would be concerned as to whether or not this inventory was actually going to be selling or not. So look for unusual, noteworthy, perhaps suspicious items, uh, journals, write-off of large debts and so on, all of which are going to be worthy of investigation by the order term. You can also get it to re-perform calculations. Uh, and just the simple act of adding up a file is, is immensely important. Uh, if you have an inventory file, how do you know that the closing inventory as given to you by the client, is actually represented by the total of all the inventory amounts. So in a supermarket, you could have 70, 80, 90,000 different sorts of inventory there. It's not practical for the auditor to sit down with a calculator uh, and start adding this up uh, to make sure that the inventory is actually supported by detailed records. Or what about the depreciation charge? It's all very well saying that uh, vehicles are depreciated over five years, 20% per annum. But of course, you have to be careful not to keep depreciating a vehicle uh, if it's kept for six or seven years. You mustn't go into kind of negative net book value. Uh, and the only way really to be certain that the depreciation has been calculated correctly is maybe by redoing it yourself. But again, the, the, the great power is that you can quickly go through 100% of the client's records. The order program here 
operates on the client data. The second type of computer assisted audit technique is test data and here the test data is the auditors. So the audit program that belonged to the auditor and the test data belongs to the auditors. And what you do is you feed test data, special data, into the client system to see if the client system handles it correctly. So the client uh, kind of swears blind to you uh, that in their sales system, if somebody's inputting stuff on the internet, trying to order goods, uh, what the system will do uh, is to refuse orders which would put that person over a credit limit. But there may be no permanent record of that, just a message comes up on the customer's computer saying, sorry, you're over your credit limit. Uh, but no permanent record is, is kept of that, uh, you know, turning down the customer's order. Yet it's going to be very important that we don't uh, give orders to send out goods to people who are not credit worthy. How can the auditor check that the uh, client's program is actually behaving, that the client's program is actually responsible for, in a way, enforcing an element of internal control? These programmed procedures uh, are, in a way, programmed internal controls very often. So what you do is you feed in your test data. It's going to be operated on by a program. So what I could do for that particular example, I set myself up as a customer. I give myself a credit limit of a thousand. And then I go on the internet and I try and order goods worth 1500 and see if it actually refuses me. In fact, what I would probably do is I would order some goods at 800 and then I'd order some goods at uh, maybe 100, so we're up to 900 now. And uh, then I would order some goods for 300, which would just then push me over the credit limit. So it should say yes to the first two orders and no to the last order. Uh, and, that, and that's how we can see that the client's programs are operating correctly. Or what if uh, in your wages system, people were supposed to be paid the ordinary amount up to 40 hours, anything over 40 hours are paid at twice the hourly rate uh, and over 60 hours uh, something's a bit odd there that you should get a special kind of warning print out this person seems to be uh, submitting a, a very high number of hours and we shouldn't actually pay out anything until we investigate it well set yourself up as an employee uh, put in your clock card with 39 hours that should be fine put in your clock card with 50 hours 40 should be paid normally, 10 should be paid at twice. Put in a clock card of 61 hours and see if it objects to processing that clock card at all. So are the programs operating correctly? Are the controls operating? The difficulty with test data, particularly with test data, is if I'm setting myself up as a, a fake customer or a fake employee, uh, and then I, I put some transactions through to that data. Those transactions are fake transactions. Uh, and we have to be careful to, to, to kind of reverse them at some point. Otherwise, we're actually putting errors into the financial statements. Uh, for that reason, uh, test data, uh, the use of test data, it's usually done on what's called dead test data. This means that a client gives you a copy of their files, let's say the, the sales files, gives you a copy of the sales system and then you can put rubbish in to test it to destruction almost to your heart's content uh, without really uh, running the risk of ruining the client system. Live test data is pretty rare, that would be where you're actually allowed to, to put live transactions through or transactions through to the live system that the client is using. And most clients are quite understandably reluctant for you to do that. Similarly, audit programs, quite often, instead of running the audit programs against the, the real records of the company, they give you a copy of the records. Uh, they have to of course, safeguard their records. Uh, and there's always a chance that some incompetent auditor, uh, when running their audit programs, manages to wipe all their records. And that won't make you too popular uh, at all. Computer-assisted order techniques uh, tend to be a little expensive in the first year. Uh, you have to 
uh, amend your programs if you like so it will read the particular patterns of data that the client is is holding you have to think very carefully about the test data you have to go to this bother of getting copies of the systems and so on so it's a little bit expensive in the first year but then thereafter it is fantastic you get enormous amounts of audit information and audit testing done very very quickly indeed it's very efficient and very effective at not only examining data but testing the operation of the client's programs.